covering weapon systems across air, land, and sea. Welcome to Millpower Minis. The XB-70 Valkyrie was a beast of an aircraft that required incredible engineering to make happen. Weighing more than a fully loaded Boeing 787 at 542,000 pounds, yet flying three times as fast and 80% higher, the bomber's performance was nothing less than insane. The Valkyrie's cruising speed was three times the speed of sound at 2,000 miles per hour, the same speed of a bullet leaving the muzzle of an M4 rifle. The first Valkyrie, AV-1, would first break Mach 3 on October 14, 1965, while cruising more than 13 miles above the California desert. AV-2 would reach the Valkyrie's highest recorded speed of Mach 3.08 and sustain it for a duration of 20 minutes, covering more than 600 miles. The XB-70 remains the largest and heaviest aircraft to ever reach Mach 3. The kinetic heating caused by air friction flying at Mach 3 plus speeds would reach temperatures high enough to soften conventional aircraft materials such as aluminum. The nose and horizontal splitter could reach upwards of 630 degrees Fahrenheit, with large sections of the Valkyrie skin at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, while aluminum starts to lose strength and warp at only 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Titanium could sustain these temperatures without issue, yet the metal was not only very expensive, but exceedingly rare. So, to solve this unique hurdle, engineers arrived at a creative solution. Honeycomb panels sandwiched between sheets of stainless steel in the skin of the aircraft. Titanium would only be used where the heating would be the most prevalent. To cool the skin of the jet and the internals, fuel was pumped throughout the skin through heat exchangers. The Valkyrie's variable geometry wings could pivot downwards depending on speed to enhance stability and compression lift. At takeoff and landing speeds, the wings would extend outwards with no inclination. When flying at 350 miles per hour, up to Mach 1.4, the wings would tilt down 25 degrees and 65 degrees when above Mach 1.5. The engines, the General Electric YJ-93, were specifically designed for the Valkyrie and capable of producing almost 29,000 pounds of thrust in afterburner. The Valkyrie had six of these in a cluster nicknamed the Six Pack. To put this into perspective, this is comparable to three F-15 Eagles in full afterburner. The engines were fed air via a variable geometry air intake, changing shape based on speed and air density to provide an uninterrupted airflow and control shockwaves. Being most efficient in full afterburner at Mach 3, the six-pack could propel the enormous Valkyrie up to an altitude of 75,000 feet at Mach 3 for over two and a half hours. During one flight, AV-2 reached Mach 3 and 70,000 feet, only 25 minutes after taking off. The Valkyrie also sported a fully pressurized cabin, much like a civilian airliner, removing the need for aircrew to wear full pressure suits even when cruising at two and a half times the height of Mount Everest. Should a Valkyrie ever go down, the cockpit had a revolutionary closing pod escape system, fitted with crew survival gear and flotation devices for water landings. The pods could also be used in the event of decompression, encapsulating the crew, providing onboard oxygen, and the pilot could even still fly the aircraft from inside. Upon landing, the enormous bomber's six-ton landing gear would absorb the kinetic energy equal to stopping 800 mid-sized cars speeding at 100 miles per hour. The Valkyrie was nothing short of remarkable in its performance capabilities. On June 8, 1966, after nearly a year of flight tests and research, the second of the two Valkyries would crash in a tragic mid-air collision that killed co-pilot U.S. Air Force Major Carl Cross and F-104 pilot Captain Joe Walker. Today, the world's only surviving XB-70 currently resides in the Major General Albert Boyd, and Major General Fred Ascani Research and Development Gallery of the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson AFB, Ohio. A reminder of great triumphs and terrible tragedy. The lessons of the Valkyrie on aviation cannot be overstated. From furthering understanding of the supersonic flight regime to the advent of the honeycomb panel, which almost every aircraft uses to this day, 